Welcome. At this time, I'd like to call our October 2019 Planning Commission meeting to order. A reminder to please silence your cell phones. Amber, will you call roll, please? Here. 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 Thank you very much. This is just a little excerpt we'd like to say. If you're speaking <coughs> in any public hearing this evening for any items on the agenda, please sign in with your name and address. And please limit your comments to the five minute time frame. The commission will be presented with an agenda item by our planning department staff. The representative will have a time to present as well as answer specific questions. We will then open a public hearing and this is the opportunity for you to speak about the issue. We wish for everyone to be heard. We invite you to ask questions and state your case. Please be mindful of the time and keep your discussion and comments relevant to the agenda at hand. After everyone who wishes to speak has spoken, we will close the public hearing. The representative will then have additional opportunity to respond to the public discussion and to answer any commissioner questions. Then we will open to the commissioner's comments and questions to make a decision based on zoning laws, our comp plan, and the good of the community. At this time, I would like to open citizens' communication. If there's anyone here that would like to speak or address anything with the commission with something in reference that's not on the agenda tonight, please come forward. Seeing no one, I'll close that club citizens' communication, but I would like to welcome our Citizens Planning Academy. Here they are here tonight with us. Thank you all. Our first item of business is that there are four agenda items tonight that have been requested to postpone until next month. The first on that list is ecological insulation, conditional use approval. The Greens, PDD amendment, conditional use approval. Summerlin Platt, preliminary plat, and the Summerlin Platt final plat. Mr. Cotton. Yes, ma'am, just those four items, they've all requested to be, for various reasons, to postpone until November 14th. Okay. At the request of these applicants, I do need a motion that we postpone these items until our so November 14th. We postpone until the uh, next regular meeting day. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We do still have one item remaining under old business, um, the Buckner property, conditional use approval. Mr. Caldwell. <coughs> Good afternoon. Hello. You may recall this case from last month. Uh, the address is 355 Armstrong, a corner lot on the south, south end of Armstrong at Samford. The conditional use is for a private dormitory use. Uh, the site plan uh, is indicative of a, town, of a townhome development, but per our regs, this meets our private dormitory use category and is here before you for the conditional use. It was tabled last month. Uh, based on the elevations that were provided in that time frame, we have uh, met with the owner uh, and on a separate occasion met with the architect. Uh, and they have submitted uh, revised renderings, um, breaking the massing of the building up uh, from its original design. Um, staff's available for any questions you have. Um, again, we. We've met, had two occasions to meet since the last meeting. We've received a good bit of correspondence, um, about, about 12 um, either emails, phone calls, or visits to the office, um, and they were negative uh, in their um, interpretation of the conditional use. I just have a clarification question. The townhomes, if they were not floor plan to it, the way they are, they would be allowed. Great. So townhomes are permitted by right. Okay. Thank you. Is applicant here. Is representative here. One. Does not appear so. All right. This item does require public hearing. And if I'll open that now. Anyone like to speak on this matter?
My name is Bill Kasky. I live at 521 East Samford. And I am vehemently opposed to a development of this size, magnitude. What's on that property currently is a two bedroom, one bath, kind of a cute little cottage type house, single family dwelling. In proximity to that, what is it, 200 feet before you get to a regular single family home. It's less than 500 feet from the junior high. A building of that size is not in keeping with the neighborhood. Even though there may be some zoning opportunities, it's not in keeping with the character of the neighborhood, the size of the homes in the neighborhood, any of those properties. So to take a, a two bedroom, one bath house and replace it with an 18 bedroom, 18 bath, four half bath, giant private dormitory is ludicrous. It is what I'd call creeping encroachment on the areas around there. You're real close to uh, Payne Street, you're real close to Pinedale, and it is destructive of the value of the homes that are in those neighborhoods that are single family homes predominantly. So I, I just, I, I can't imagine um, the traffic that will be generated. That's already a very busy intersection. The corner of Armstrong and Sanford is, is crowded. So to put up a giant property that I'm gonna surmise would have to have variances because the rules I believe state 1.1 bedroom or uh, uh, parking spaces per bedroom. So now you gotta put 20 parking spaces on this same property. I have no idea where you'd put them unless you're digging really deep and have three stories underground. There's no way you can put 20 parking spaces on a, a lot that is basically a single family residential small lot with, a, with an appropriately sized home on it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this matter? Oh, yes, ma'am. I apologize for my appearance, but I'm going to an outdoor event. <laughs> so I am addressed for it. My name is Carolyn Carr. I live at 342 Payne Street, and I'm the president of the uh, neighborhood group for Payne Street, Pinedale, Hare Avenue. Um, frankly, the people in our neighborhood are not uh, happy with this. Um, we realize that we've only seen the one printed uh, picture of it, and it's hard to get a total impression of what is involved there, but the scale of it is very bothersome to us. We just feel that, um, as the previous gentleman said, um, it's out of scale for the neighborhood. And um, on down the block um, toward Payne Street, there are two homes that have been restored in the last 10 years. And uh, around the corner on Payne Street, there is a um, Mrs. Sargent's home that is now under restoration. And people just feel this type of thing, three stories and so forth, just you know keeps encroaching on our neighborhood. Um, now, truthfully, we realize that Armstrong has been pretty well pillaged of its historic nature, if I may put it that way. And of course the Armstrong home is gone, that beautiful home. The lovely mansion that was across the street from it is long gone. Ugly apartments having replaced them in both cases. Um, we're really very concerned that yet one more um, apartment will be put up there. And this doesn't involve just Payne Street and, our, and Sanford Avenue, but also down Wright Mill Road, where there, there's some lovely homes also that we feel like, you know, um, the, uh, well, I, when I say encroachment, it's, it's not just that it is tall, that it seems way too big for the lot and that type of thing, but the traffic problem also very much concerns us. When 221 Armstrong was built, we asked the city to do a traffic study in the area. Oh no, it was not necessary to do a traffic study. It would not affect Payne Street. It has affected Payne Street. Let's just be honest about it. Um, and we have had a we had a huge increase in wrong way driving on Payne Street and uh, shall we say high speed driving on the street. And we have small children on our street. So we would really like to say that uh, surely something, well we frankly we hate to see the lovely home that's there disappear because it's very much in character with the 20s and I mean the 30s and 40s architecture that goes on down the street but if something, uh, and we realize they certainly have a right to build uh, apartments there, but if something is built there that it should be much more in keeping in the, with the scale and character of the neighborhood. Thank you. 
Anyone else like to speak about Armstrong? I need to sign in, but I will. Thank you. Uh, I just actually had some questions. Uh, in looking through the packet, it says surface parking along South Gay will need to be screened. Will you state your name and address, please? Oh, Linda Dean, 474 Scott Street, and I will sign in. Um, could Maybe Mr. Tyler uh, Cole? Could you say that again? Yeah, on the first page of the packet, surface parking along South Gay will need to be screened. Correct. That's a part, of the, part of the code, part of the ordinance. Oh, so th this property is not on South Gay Street. Oh, apologize. Yeah, that should be Armstrong. Thank you. All right, so that corrects that puzzle. All right, um, then within the packet um, on page three, uh, it says the current development lacks three parking places. And then later on in the description on page five of the packet, um, the proposed site plan is not compliant with these regulations showing 17 parking places when 20 are required for 18 bedrooms within the private dormitory. Right. On the, on the top of the first page, I said that in, in, in italics, the updates have been added. So that would have been from the previous month. Okay. So it's odd, though, because I actually printed out both versions. <clears throat> and on one version, like right there on page five, item one, it says the site plan is compliant. All multiple unit residential development shall provide one visitor parking space for each 10 bedrooms within the project. And it says the site plan is compliant, whereas the, the very same page says it is not compliant. And also on this, where, on this right here that was part of today's packet, it says uh, total lot site information table, you all have this also, where it says that 20 parking places are required and 20, and it's compliant, 20 parking places are provided. So my main questions are, are that there is inconsistent information in the packet that maybe you can explain uh, because... Yeah, and uh, we'd uh, love to do this during okay. our working hours during the day, but I'm happy to do it now. Will you toggle me over? The site plan that they've revised and provided, they believe show 20 functioning parking spaces. We haven't had time to vet that like we would in a development review team process. But yes, the site plan that, the site plan that they've provided <laughs> Is shows ten spaces, well, or shows twenty spaces. So, I'll sit down. But Did I answer your question? You, well, where are they? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the applicant, which you're welcome to come by the office, and we can sit down and do this anytime. But the applicant's showing two spaces under each unit in the garage, an extra space here, and then ten spaces along the back of the property, I believe. So just. Two spaces under each unit. Correct. That's eight. And then 10 along the property. Or maybe it's 11 along the property. I don't, I'm not exactly sure. I'm counting 10. 11. I think that's the 11th one right there. Again, hasn't been looked at by our engineering department or the planning department in detail like we will for the development review. But these people are looking at it now. That's right. Now. Right, and they're ruling on, that's correct. Tyler, if I can interject real quick. It, I mean, from our perspective, the 20 spaces will be required for the development. That's correct. For them to be able to, right. if this is approved, for them to be able to move forward. move forward with this, they have to provide the 20 parking spaces. I mean, that's not an option, correct? That's correct. Okay. Unless they were to obtain a variance, which I would think would be... So during the design review, they would have to provide... Yeah, if, if it's not already shown here, it, they would it, have to When provide. it comes to a conditional use approval process, the way the, the, way the code is written is that a, a conditional use site plan is deemed to be somewhat conceptual, which means all the full engineering hasn't been done, all of the actual calculations may not have been performed. 
if we identify deficiencies, we try to do that, but then we also try to do, um, I think we do a pretty good job of it, is just making sure that everyone understands there is a second, much more detailed level of review. Um, the, the issues like uh, parking spaces and making sure they get those, um, those all really get hammered out, for lack of a better term, at, at DRT. What what you're charged with as part of this application is just considering the essentially the appropriateness of this, of this use as it's been presented to you at this location, given the nature of the surrounding development and uses. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Anyone else like to speak on the public hearing? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Commissioners, questions, comments? Understanding that we are only doing use. If they were doing townhomes, we would not be here. And uh, the use is permitted, uh, already approved and permitted by the the private because it's a pri deemed to be a private dormitory. It requires conditional use approval. If it were deemed to be a townhouse, which it has not been deemed to be a townhouse, it would be permitted by right. But what you are considering is the private dormitory use. So to clarify, just for the sake of the, the public hearing and, and this meeting. Yes, ma'am. Had the floor plans been presented differently on the interior of these units to qualify more as townhomes, we would not even be here. Is that correct? Right. And that was something that the, ap the applicant could have chosen to do. They chose not to do that. Um, but the scale of the building and the height of the building and the density of the lot those are all those are all fair for consideration under the auspices of a conditional use review okay. so um, if they had if they made changes to the floor plan and pulled this and went to get a permit for townhouses they they could do that by right provided they meet all the zoning regulations parking requirements setback requirements what have you it'd be prudent to note though it would probably have significantly less bedrooms and significantly less parking correct and kind of an intensity right. of the site would be much much less that's a that's a fair observation okay. but the but the use the conditional use has been approved in this zoning via public hearing and whatever as a conditional use. This is not anything new. This was this use has been approved in the uh, in the past uh, for this location. Not that I'm aware of. For the zone or for area. this no, for, specific yeah, for location. For the area, student housing is a lot, has been approved in this area. We have had we have had. The recent new development of student housing in this general area was approved before we had um, some of these regulations in place. I will say that. But there's no question. There has been redevelopment that is student housing in, in the vicinity of this property. Question. Ready for a motion? Yeah, I, my, my comment would be to, to the committee, to the fellow commissioners is that it appears to be a relatively small block a lot as somebody pointed out and it's a relatively large structure although we don't have a lot of good data we've seen some very sketchy sketches so we really don't know quite what what the end product's going to look like and I'm not sure without knowing that whether we can honestly say that it's consistent with the surrounding area especially on the block on which it sits, and which is face in a sense that it faces East Sanford and the and the rest of that block across from the junior high school are one and two story, relatively small homes or, or maybe offices or whatever, but they're small. And this is significantly large on a very and a, on a very busy intersection, and I don't think we have a lot of information from the developer, builder, whatever, to be sure that it would it would not be inconsistent. Um, so that's my concern. We just we don't have a lot of information, and it appears that it it could easily be inconsistent with the appearance of the surrounding uh, structures. It's not in our purview for this evening to consider. I'm sorry? Our consideration this evening is just for the conditional use approval for it to be 
private dormitory. It's not going to be any higher than already is allowed. No, I'm, I know that, but it still needs to be consistent to some degree. Don't we have some? We, we talked about this a little bit at, at Packet, and I'd mentioned I would get with our legal counsel. I'd had some preliminary discussions, but had some more involved discussions uh, after the Packet meeting. But while the conditional use criteria does not use the term architecture, under things that are qualified to be reviewed, it does use the term neighborhood character. And what is encompassed in a review of neighborhood character is architecture, is size and scale, and those kinds of elements. So um, if the, in the words of the legal counsel, if the commission were to feel that there would be an adverse impact to the surrounding neighborhood based on your findings of this application, and it may be, as, as Commissioner Rittenbaugh mission, it may be that you feel you don't have enough information to make that determination or evaluation. Um, but if you were, if you did have enough information to make that determination, then um, you know you would have to feel there's an adverse impact that would be represented by this development and this manifestation, and that it would compromise the surrounding neighborhood character. That would be a legal basis for de for recommendation for denial. So when you're when you're talking about impact, then are you talking about? Do you feel like it's just the way that the building looks, or well, are we, we don't, talking about traffic? I honestly don't are know how the building's going to look. <clears throat> I don't think any of us can say that with any certainty. We haven't seen very much. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, as um, th if you drive up, what street is that? Rice Rice Mill Road, perhaps. It's actually dead on. It's in. It, in other words, it it does impact Rice Mill Road houses because of the way it sits on the property. That, that This lot is at the head of Rice Mill Road, uh, so it affects not only uh, East Sanford, but it affects Rice Mill Road. Now, you know, if it was, uh, it, yes, it's going to be three-story, maybe that alone is not knock it out, that's fine, but I'm just concerned that we don't know what it's going to look like and and it doesn't appear to me that it may it may very well be somewhat inconsistent with the surrounding property. So that's my concern. And if the if the builder was here to reassure us somehow, that would be very helpful. And to to address your concern about how it looks, it makes it very difficult because if we had ten different submittals, we may get. Five, six, seven different opinions. opinions of what it may look like, and I don't know if we have a a criteria to judge looks. Uh, you know, that's somewhat someone said one time, maybe in the, behind, the eyes of the beholder. So I think we've got to stay focused on the use <coughs> as to what's on the agenda. I know that they aren't required to do design review. Has that have they been asked if they would be willing to do that? They have not as of yet. They have not agreed to it or have not been. Um, we that that discussion hasn't taken place. I mean, it would it would be um, it would be You know, it would certainly be voluntary. <coughs> also, Forrest, I do have some concerns about the compatibility of this uh, project. Yes, sir. Also, um, are we comfortable with the traffic, um, the effects of the traffic at this corner? Well, certainly you will have, I mean, you'll, uh, th you'll have the comments from engineering services in your packet as it relates to traffic. But uh, I, as was uh, mentioned before by, by one of our uh, guest speakers, that, the, you know, you've got a considerable um, increase in density and intensity. And of course, all of those things are permitted. Under the under the zoning designation, but again, I think really what what um, you know what you're looking at what, what I think you're certainly um, empowered to look at and charged with looking at as part of the zoning ordinance is a number of issues related to conditional use approval and, and neighborhood character is certainly one of those, and I think a lot of it d depends on how you feel this the particular manifestation of this building. Um, and, and I'm talking really more in terms of issues of size and scale and fitting in, um, not necessarily building materials and those kinds of things. I think those are 
um, largely left up to the to the builder and developer but those are the kinds of deliberations and discussions I I think you know hopefully would would help you um, come down on this on this application in one way or the other can we hear a little bit about maybe the future road improvement that might be taking place through that area is there a plan yet for that gay Sanford Armstrong right paint I mean all that's it's pretty congested there. Do you have is that down the road a little bit, or do we know anything yet uh, on uh, that? I'm assuming there'll be some it, intersection it, work done at college, and <laughs> we're not opening up a <laughs> big can of worms. So, talking. Yes, we do have plans to improve Sanford from College Street to just past Gay Street. Okay. Um, including signal upgrades, sidewalk enhancements, pedestrian lighting. Mm -hmm. Currently, we don't have any plans from just uh, east of Gay mm -hmm. to uh, well, for the remainder of Sanford. We are in the process mm -hmm. of it's scheduled for the FY19 resurfacing project. Mm -hmm. So it should be resurfaced and restriped within the next six, eight months, as well as some sidewalk repair. <coughs> Think of any other long -term capital improvements and I know there's not a lot of rain really yeah. to do a whole lot through there. Uh, so. High school moving, we talked years ago about why we say particularly. I remember that. Yeah. Concerns about the historical nature of it. Um, but since high school moved, traffic has gotten so much better. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, so far, now we're just going to stop just past Gay Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 I don't. Uh, I can understand the concerns, but it's it's zoned properly. It's allowed as a conditional use, which was part of a public hearing when all that zoning and took place. It's not anything new. There are apartments right to the north of it, and I don't. Uh, uh, I don't know how we can. Well, I guess we could find some reason, but I don't see any reason that it not be approved and would make a motion to that. I have a motion. I would second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. No. Amber, should we have a roll call vote? Wayne Bledsoe. Yes. Robin Bridges? No. Emma Jager? Yes. Mike Lazenby? Yes. Matt Reese? Yes. Bob Reitenbaugh? No. Pass, thank you. Motion pass. Okay. Next, we will move into our consent agenda. It consists of six items, <coughs> including our packet meetings from September 9th, and our regular meeting minutes from September 12th. Mr. Cotton. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we've got the, uh, of course, we've got your minutes. We've got a couple of annexations, the first of which is the Manly annexation. This property is located in the south part of town uh, near the intersection of Moores Mill and Society Hill Road. You can see the subject parcel just above the city's large future park holding uh, located here. And, of course, a lot of the parcels in this on this uh, outskirts of the city are still in unincorporated Lee County and, and are reflected in the white. Um, the property is a little over one acre in size, so it would come in as non-conforming because it was subdivided when it was out in the county, and that's, that's not unusual. Um, it is contiguous to the city limits to the south. This is an aerial view just to show you still what's generally rural in nature, and it meets the criteria, and we've recommended approval. Uh, likewise, the, uh, the Peterson annexation, annexation is next. That property is also on the south side of the city. This time we're near the intersection of Wrights Mill Road and Shell Tumor Parkway. All of that area that you see shaded in the darker green is reflective of Chihuahua uh, State Park. So you can see the immediate proximity of this parcel to the park. This is over three acres in size. So if annexed, it will come in and will be conforming with our rural zoning designation. Most of the other parcels in the immediate vicinity that aren't part of the state park are zoned rural as well. Um, we've recommended approval. We have one final plat approval request and this is a this is out on the western extension of Richland Road 
um, part of what was formerly known as the Cotswolds property. This is East Richland Phase Two Final Plat. This is a 55 lot conventional subdivision with 53 of those 55 lots being for single family detached residences. You can see as well that this uh, development, at least on the north side of Richland, is relatively quickly approaching build out. This is the uh, preliminary plat that was initially submitted. It's not atypical for uh, larger portions of the development to come in for preliminary plat approval and then they'll develop in subsequent phases and that's the case with this development. So you can see really the, the eastern half of what was shown in the preliminary is what's being um, requested to be platted as part of your final plat approval. And we've recommended approval of this. This is just an aerial image dating back to 2017. Um, that just shows the general nature of the development in the surrounding area. We finished up with two bond extension waiver requests. The first is in Yarbrough Farms, the park. So now we're moving eastward back towards Shug Jordan Parkway along Richland Road. And this is the southern half of Yarbrough Farms. Um, you can see the subject property. You can see that it's also getting very close to being built out, but an extension has been requested. Um, and we've, we've fairly recently adopted a procedure where if the engineering services department is in general agreement with the request of that extension, then it goes on, on, on consent. And so engineering is agreeable with the developer to the time frame they've requested. Finally, Donahue Ridge Phase 3. So we, we move uh, a little bit north and a little bit east of the previous two properties. This is up off of Do North Donahue Drive. You can see some lots within Camden Ridge, kind of in the western fringe of the frame of the Prox map. And Donahue Ridge, of course, is on the east side of North Donahue Drive. These are the subject lots outlined that are part of Phase 3. And again, reaching a rapidly approaching build-out Engineering services is agreeable to the time frame requested by the developer, and as such, uh, we recommend approval of all the consent items and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. This does not require a public hearing. Commissioners, do you have any questions, comments? I move on approval of the consent agenda, including the approval of the minutes of the packet meeting, September the 9th, and the regular meeting, September the 12th. I'll second. The motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Great. Thank you. Oops. <coughs> we will now move to new business. We will start with agenda item 9, Woodward Oaks PDD amendment. Mr. Kip. Good evening, commissioners. Um, this is a rezoning request to amend the Woodward, Woodward Oaks PDD. Um, the subject property is about 231 acres in total. Um, it runs from North Donahue Drive up to West Farmville Road. Um, it was part of a PDD and annexation known as the Burt property back in 2017. And since then, we've seen several uh, platting and phases come on with uh, single family homes. This is the MDP that was approved and that is current. Um, the applicant is requesting to make an amendment to that and add an office use and a municipal facility, um, specifically a fire station. The proposed office use would be in red here on the corner. This would be the south, I guess the southeast corner, and the fire station at the north corner of Farmville Road. Um, the number of single family lots and townhomes would remain the same at 517 total. And this would be built out in phases. The applicant submitted um, a written report and all the necessary information um, with the conditional use request after this. Staff is recommending approval. Um, and the um, future land use is low density residential, but um, since there is a PDD on top of it, that pretty much overrides that land use. And in a subsequent update to the comp plan, we would adjust that to uh, plan development district. Um, happy to answer any questions, and the applicant's representative is here. Um, this item does require a public hearing, so I'll open that now. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Oh, I'm so sorry.
evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity tonight. I'm Jesse Sheely, representing 1962 Miracle Road resident. And I just want to say to all of you that the development that's going on in our community is phenomenal. And we are in support of you moving forward and approving this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to this agenda item? Okay, close the public hearing. Um, applicant, representative, any? Okay, great. Commissioners, questions, comments? May I ask a question of Logan? Just, just for um, scope purposes, I'm just curious. What's the approximate distance from one end to the other of this hole? Do you have, is it one mile, two miles, do we know? I do not know. Um, no, I, I do not know. I would say maybe one, one and a half, two miles, if I had to guess, but complete guess. Okay, any questions? Thoughts? Motions. Move to approve. 2019 501. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. Um, this is the accompanying conditional use request for both the office use and the um, fire station for the same property. Um, Prox map again showing the, those locations. <coughs> um, the now current PDD amendment that you just looked at. This is the proposed office location. This is a um, Basically, a contractor's office, which is usually permitted by right in a development, um, but this is going to be a more long-term, more permanent contractor's office for the Woodward Oaks and general Auburn area for this contractor developer. Um, and the fire station at the north northern end of this property, um, both of these would go through the DRT process like normal and probably have more a result of that would be more specific um, plans. These are more conceptual. Um, we're recommending approval for both the office and the fire station. Um, the applicant's here, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Conditional use approval does require a public hearing, so I will open that now. Anyone? Nope. I will close the public hearing. Commissioners, comments, questions, motions. Move to approve PL 2019-502, Woodward Oaks Office and Municipal for approval with staff comments. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Vineyard Creek Estates Preliminary Plat. Mr. Howell. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Next item for the uh, on your agenda is the Vineyard Creek Estates preliminary plat. This is a preliminary plat request to subdivide approximately 121 and a half acres into seven lots. The property, as you can see on the prox map here, is in the planning jurisdiction in the uh, pretty much the furthest extent possible within the planning jurisdiction, but it is still in. Um, you can tell, okay, so here's the, here's the county line up here along the north next to Tallapoosa County. Uh, far down here in the bottom right, you see the closest uh, extent of the city limits right there. So here's a copy of the plat. This is, uh, it has since been revised to include a couple of county recommendations, but essentially is the same. Uh, it's seven lots, primarily uh, six, along the, uh, six along the road, one in the rear. Uh, in its position, uh, subdivisions in the county, in the planning jurisdiction, are required to be a minimum of one acre if they are outside of the optimal, or excuse me, if they're outside of the, uh, the optimal boundary, which this definitely is. Um, all of those, all those, all these lots uh, meet that requirement in spades. I have received no correspondence in favor or opposed to this. Okay. Quick overhead, very much undeveloped. Uh, there is an existing cemetery, uh, but otherwise unused. Okay. 
pending any of your questions of staff. Okay, thank right. you. Lone Mary Platts do require a public hearing. We'll open that now. Good evening, uh, Derek Dixon. I'm just here representing the property, and thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Anyone else for the public hearing? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Commissioners, move to approve 2019-507 Vineyard Creek Estates with staff comments. Second. So, motion in the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Howell. All right. Uh, right on the heels, final plat of the, uh, the same, uh, same plat that we just discussed. All comments still apply. I move to approve item 12. <laughs> it does not require public hearing. <laughs> I have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item 15, Yarbor Farm Subdivision, the park preliminary plat. Mr. Howell. All right. Yarbor Farms, the park, first edition. It's a preliminary plat request for uh, approximately 43 acres to subdivide into 29 performance single family lots. It includes 26 single family detached lots, two open space lots, and one future development lot. Here's a copy of the plat. Uh, it is uh, in keeping with the established uh, or the approved master development plan. The most recent addition to, or change to that was in 2017. Um, here's a copy of that. Uh, of, of that master development plan for this particular area. It includes the lots along this stretch of uh, Andrews, I believe, continuing into a cul-de-sac. So all of section J would be part of this plat as well as the northern section of I with the remainder of this parcel being in a future development. This particular, uh, this particular plat is a, proposes a gross density of a little over uh, one half dwelling unit an acre with a net density of single family lots of two and uh, a little bit less than two and a half dwelling units an acre. The maximum density for the CDD, which is the underlying zoning here, is nine and a half dwelling units an acre. So it's uh, significantly less more importantly, it's a, in keeping with the approved master development plan, as we've already discussed. One note, one note that uh, staff is uh, pointing out is its proximity to a proposed uh, greenway. As you can see, it wraps around the northern section of the, uh, of the plat and then continues in and crisscrosses that boundary as it is around the, uh, the north North Point subdivision, North Lake subdivision. Anyway, the uh, and so staff is recommending to make sure that during the during the plotting process, we make sure that we provide access to that proposed greenway. Greenway, and as part of comments, staff is recommending approval. Okay. Thank you. Preliminary plats do require public hearing, so I'll open that now. Number of forms. Yes, sir. I'm kind of hard hearing. You say it's open? Yes. I guess that's my turn. It, it's <laughs> your turn. I apologize for my tire, but I'm old, hot, and tired, so I came in so comfortable. <laughs> my name is Robert Michael Ward, Sr. I've lived next to the Greens long before they ever acquired that property from Cecil Yarborough. To be quite honest with you, I'm adamantly opposed to it, not for the construction, but for what the construction does. If I might... The Greens app, he's speaking to the Greens application, which has been postponed. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't know it was postponed. I saw Yarborough. I'm sorry. I thought that was Cecil Yarborough's property that used to be, which is now the Oh, no, way. sir. This is, this is Yarborough Farms up off of Richland Road. My apologies. So I wasted my time to come here tonight. Well, you'll get another chance next month. 
if you'd like 14th. to come back. Well, you know, as much money as I pay on three businesses, y'all don't have enough money to call me on the phone and tell me, Mr. Ward, we postponed this meeting? I, I didn't know it until literally today when they told me they had bad weather in Arkansas. It was going to be 29 degrees tonight, and they couldn't make the flight out here. I, I, had, I had a few more hours notice than you got. Well, that was awful courteous. Well, while I've got the floor and I'm going to leave, and I'm going to tell you this, and I'm, now I'm my dander's up. I met in this very room when this man made his first proposal, and I told him that my father and I have ran that fence since 1952. And I asked him, are you planning on putting any staples in that fence or erecting it, and what are you going to do when my cows come across it? And he assured me that he would build a nice fence. I hadn't seen it yet. So anything that man has to say that's snowed in, it does not ring much of truth to me. Thank you all for your time. I'll see you at the next meeting. Thank and you. I'll postpone the next one. Would you be courteous enough to let me know? I'll be glad to. I just found out about it. How long I, I ago? About four hours ago. Well, you know how long it took me to turn my phone on and call you? Thank you, sir. You're a gentleman of Scott. Okay. Your reforms. Public hearing still is still open. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Commissioners, any questions, comments? I just, I guess I'd like to just make a, a comment regarding, over the last several meetings, we've heard people that live along Richland Road expressing concern with the traffic. And with, there's no easy solution, and that doesn't mean we should delay or it doesn't affect our decision on this, but it's additional, another 50 homes that will probably end up further exacerbating the traffic problem. So we really, somehow the commission should encourage city council, I guess, to do what they can to alleviate the Richmond Road problem. If it's, all, if it's as bad as we've heard it is, um, it's, it's a, you know, and we, and we, these proposals make sense and we approve them and I will be voting in favor of this, but it just, it does, it does increase the, the, the crisis apparently on the, on Richland Road traffic problem. That's all. Thank you. Is that anything in staff comments about traffic issues? Is there anything in staff comments about this traffic? I don't have mine pulled up. Well, in, in my understanding, and I know I know traffic on Richland is is bad, particularly in the morning when people are going to school and people are going to work. Um, possibly not quite as bad in the afternoon because arrival, I mean, dismissal from school does not time-wise coordinate with people getting off of work. So the traffic is a little more dispersed during those that period of time. Um, and I drive up and down that road pretty frequently, um, as do several of us. And the other periods of time during the day it's you know manageable sure. um, so I, you know I don't know what the solution is to that morning traffic um, and we did just make a giant improve I mean an improvement to that light there you know unless there's a way for kids to get on buses to get to those schools and I did, have been told that that's not particularly an option right. for the right. school board so um, while I sympathize with it, I don't really know what the answer to that problem is. And, it, and it's worth a note just to keep it on top of mind every time we see this. This will come back the next time it's up. So. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or motions? Move to approve 2019 530 with staff comments. There are staff comments? Yes. I'll second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It opposed? Uh, aye. Okay. Motion carried. Or no, or whatever you want me to say, I'm opposed. <laughs> right. Okay. Next. 3J's RV Park Conditional Use Approval. Ms. Robinson. Yes. This is a request uh, for conditional use approval for a recreational rental dwelling use, specifically an RV park. Mm -hmm. The property is on Willis Turk Road, just south of Martin Luther King Drive in the Rural Zoning District. The property owner is 3J, 3J's Properties, and they purchased the property in, um, I believe, March of this year. When they did so, they thought the property was in the county. 
However, it is in the city limits and are under the um, zoning regulations. They, this is an as-built of what's been done to the property. Uh, gravel drive off of Willis Turk. 14 RV lots that do meet all of our regulations. Um, they are also requesting a waiver. Uh, one of the special development standards for RV parks is to require them to be on arterial roads. And Willis Turk is a collector. We are recommending approval of that waiver request because arterials are primarily for traffic to be carried to major activity centers. And this RV park will be utilized mainly during football season and by family and friends of the property owner. And we feel since Willis Turk runs north-south between two arterials, that's sufficient to carry the traffic that is generated from this um, use. Uh, the lots are about 450 feet from Willis Turk and the closest property owner to the east is a mobile home park. To the north, it's about 120 feet to a residential home. Um, it's very rural in nature in the surrounding area and it's compatible. There is, as I mentioned, a mobile home park here. Further south, there is a um, RV park in the vicinity. Oh, so we feel it, it it is compatible. Oh, good. It is compatible with the surrounding area. Um, one thing that the applicant will need to do in the future, um, our requirements as it relates to parking is we require it to be paved. And they are requesting for it to remain gravel. So they will need a variance to allow that. Um, this will go before DRT, and like I mentioned, there are several um, special development standards that will need to be checked during that process, but they did need relief from one, and that is because it's on an arterial street. So we have a conditional use approver, a waiver, and a variance before us? Well, the va variance will be before the BZA. Uh, okay. That's correct. So we, okay, we won't see that then about paving. That's right. Okay, okay. so it's not right. I received one call today from, um, I believe, a, a neighbor across the street. Um, I wasn't able to return that person's call, but they did reach out. But that is the only um, correspondence that I received on this case. Is the po property across the street in the city limits, the people that call? Parts are in and out. Yeah. Directly across, no. So this is, this whole parcel right here is owned by three J's and it was recently subdivided and this is where the RV park will go. Katie, the documents say that it's allowable to have clubhouse, bathhouse, camp store, laundry. That's are correct. any of those? They are not proposing any accessory structures. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions for staff? And they do have a representative here this evening if you have any questions. You would like to say anything or wait till the public hearing? Did you hear answer any questions? Thank you. This conditional use approval does require a public hearing. I will open that now. If anyone wishes to come forward. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Commissioners? To approve 2019 509 3J's RV Park. Second. For approval. Oh. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Ms. Robson, yes, you're back. Thanks. The final case on the agenda this evening is a conditional use request for a performance residential use, uh, two academic detached dwelling units to be located on Canton Avenue within the Neighborhood Redevelopment District. The surrounding property is um, NRD um, on the east, west, and north, and to the south is CRDW. Uh, I guess within the past year and a half, nine 
ADDUs have been built across the street and there are five to the east. So this would be very compatible to its surroundings. They have provided all of the parking, which is 1.1 spaces per bedroom. There are five bedrooms in each unit. And they have six spaces on each lot. I received one phone call today and they had no issue with the um, use. It was from the property owner to the west and she had no issue with the request and we do recommend approval with staff comments. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This does require public hearing for conditional use approval. We'll open that now. Seeing no one, I will close that. Public hearing. Commissioners, comments, questions, thoughts? I move on approval of item 17 on the agenda. Second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Any other staff communication or business? Oh, no. No, I think we're good. I'm good. <laughs> Great. You're good. Well, we're adjourned. Right. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Very nice to